Okay, as I promised, here is a few examples, actually quite a few examples, of uh, exponential laws in action. Okay, so let's look at this first one. 2 to the power of negative 2 times 6 to the power of 2. Obviously, different ways that you can do this. Let's just use the numeric way. Let's just find the answers. Okay, first of all, 2 to the power of negative 2 means we're working with the inverse of 2, which is 1 over 2. Okay, to the power of 2. Okay, since I've changed it to inverse, I don't have the negative 2 anymore. Okay, times 6 to the power of 2. Now, we've seen before that when we have same bases, we can add up exponents, or when we have same exponents, we may multiply bases. A half times 6 gives me 3. 3 squared, which means my answer is... 9 isn't that lovely okay so there we go what you could have also done was to say well um, this is 6 times 2 I'm sorry 6 times 6 it's 36 and this is 2 to the power of negative 2 means I'm going this 36 is going to be divided by the 2 twice so half of 36 is 18 and half of 18 again is 9 okay that's another way you could have done that Okay, so let's look at this one here. We simply have multiplying, multiply, 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 multiply coefficients. So it's 5 times 4 is 20, times 6 is 120. And then the bases are all the same, x, x, x. So we can just add up exponents, 10, 14, 17. So 120 x to the power of 17. Easy one. Okay, next one is similar thing, okay. What do you notice here? There's a few zero exponents. So let's first deal with them to make this whole thing simpler. So it's 5x squared. y to the power of 0 is just 1, which means it is a factor 1, which we don't need to write when 1 is the factor, unless it's the only factor, then we write it. Okay, so that is what's left in the first bracket. In the second bracket, we've got 4x to the power of 0. Please be very, very careful. This 0 belongs to the x. The, the zero's base is the x. The 4 has got nothing to do with that 0. It is simply the coefficient of x to the power of 4. Uh, sorry, to the power of 0. x to the power of 0 is therefore 1. So it's 4 times 1, which is just 4. Okay, let me stick to my color here. Okay, so if that's what I'm left with. When I'm multiplying these, coefficient and coefficient equals 20. And then the only base and exponent is x squared. Good. Okay, let's look at that next question. That one, 4x to the power of 5, the whole thing is got a power 0. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can say, well, this means the 0 gets distributed. Since there's only a single term inside the bracket, I can distribute it to every factor in that term. So it's 4 to the power of 0 times x to the power of 5 times 0, which is also 0. So I multiplied with all the exponents inside. And this is just 1 times 1, which is just 1. But from the very beginning, we could have seen anything. As long as x is not equal to 0, this answer is 0 if x is... Uh, sorry, 1 if x is unequal to 0. As long as... If x is equal to 0, then we have a problem. Then it's undefined. But if x is not equal to 0, this whole answer would equal one. Okay, that one is fairly simple enough. Here we have some examples of uh, the quotient rule. The quotient means I'm, I'm working with division and uh, the quotient rule was saying that I can subtract exponents. First I decide where's the most for x. There's 25 in the numerator and 20 in the denominator. So I'll see, okay, x is going to have, uh, the numerator has more and it has 5 more than the denominator, so there will be 5 left. Let's see how about the y's. There's more left, there's more in the numerator than the denominator. How many more? Well, there's 45 more. Okay? Which means that the other 20, the 20 in the denominator would cancel with 20 in the numerator. The 20 in this, of the x's, would cancel with 20. And that's why this is my only answer. In the denominator, we only have... In the denominator, we only have ones left. 
And since anything divided by 1 is itself, I don't even need to write it. That is my final answer. Okay, now how about this one? Okay, this one is the last law that we've, uh, or second last one we've looked at. And that is that when I have a power raised to a power, so there's my base and exponent, my power, and it has a power, then I multiply. So this is y to the power of 21, and that's the simplest I can go. Okay, this one, obviously two ways of doing this. I can either go and write this as x over 3, four times. That will be the longer method though, and uh, that is also discouraged because there's a much easier way. Now, one thing that you, that you should recognize here, and I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but if I have, um, as I have here, a times b, the law said that if I have an exponent and my uh, base can be factorized, then I can distribute it to each factor as a to the power e, b to the power e. The same goes for fractions. Okay? If I have a fraction, a numerator over a denominator, and that thing has an exponent, then the same goes for that, because it's n to the power e over d to the power e. And again, it's quite easy to, to quickly prove to you. Why? Because I've got this, e times. Okay, there's e times, there's a bunch left out because I don't know what e is, but that means I'm multiplying, uh, when I multiply fractions, I multiply numerator with numerator, denominator with denominator, so I would have multiplied the numerator e times, and I would have multiplied the denominator e times, and that's why that's true, and, and that's exactly what you do when you write it out. Okay, you're just going to see, okay, I in the end have one, two, three, four x's multiplied, so that means my answer must be x to the power of four. And I've got three x's, uh, sorry, I've got three multiplied by itself, also four times, so it's due to the power of four. So notice the same thing, I just distribute the four to the exponents here, and that uh, we could have done from the beginning, so I'll just go on from that step. And this is simply x to the power of four. What is three to the power of four? Well, three to the power of three is 81, so multiply that with three again is 24, so 240. Okay, it's good to know these off by heart, actually. Save some time. Then this one, okay, 9 to the power of 0 is just 1. And then p to the power of negative 3. p to the power of negative 3. p to the power of negative 3. What are we going to do with that one? Well, uh, we've, I also don't think I've said this, but when you have no pluses and minuses in the numerator or denominator, in other words, you've got a single term in the numerator, single term in the denominator, you can move any factor from the denominator to the numerator as long as you change its, the sign of its uh, exponent. So, for example, I can move this one up here, okay, and what I'm actually just doing is I'm multiplying at the top with a p to the power of 3, and I multiply with the bottom p to the power of 3. Let's rather do that. That, that seems better to me. Okay. Um, then I'm not moving stuff. I hate moving things in mathematics. It doesn't make sense to me. So I'd rather just multiply and divide. So let's multiply top and bottom with the same thing. Multiply the top with a p to the power of 3. And the bottom multiply with a p to the power of 3. Since I've got the same basis, I might add up the exponents, but the exponents add up to 0. So uh, that means negative 3 plus 3 is 0. p to the power of 0 is 1. So I've got p to the power of 3 over 1, or just p to the power of 3. Uh, now look what it looks like. It looks like this p is moved to the numerator. But the sign of the exponent changed. What is that? It now is a positive 3. So in general, you can use this idea that I can move a factor from the numerator to the denominator or vice versa, as long as I change the sign of the exponent. Okay, and this one, I didn't finish writing this one down. This should be to the power of negative 3. The whole thing to the power of negative 3. Now, if you look on the inside here, you've got, again, you've got two ways of doing it. You can distribute the negative 3 to every single term inside here, and then do the simplification. 
but I think it's actually easier to first simplify the inside and then do the outside. Now, that is simple bod mass. We first do what's in the brackets, then the exponent of. So, uh, but in this case, it wouldn't make a difference in which order you do it. So, let, but let's do that. Let's change, simplify this, and it's a normal fraction. And the way we do fractions is by prime factorizing our bases. Okay, so this is x to the power of negative 9. So that's x to the power of negative 9. And then in the denominator, I'm going to subtract the 8 x's in the denominator. And I've got y to the power of negative 4. And I'm going to subtract the negative 8. So minus, minus 8. Important. And we never put two negatives next to each other. Um, that's We don't do that. So put the negative 8 in brackets. Okay, and that's the power of negative 3. Okay, so if we simplify that, this, uh, sorry, and I, I forgot the 18, so these two are dividing each other, so it's 2 to the power of 8, and then this is 2 times 3 squared. Why do I say so? Because 3 squared is 9, and 2 times 9 is 18, so that's, that's just there. And I did that so that I can show you that this and that can cancel, and this 1, 3 cancels with one of those 3's. So, what am I left with? Well, I'm left with a 3 in the denominator, which means it's 3 to the power of negative 1. There's 1, 3 left in the denominator. Then I'm left with x to the power of negative 17, if I do that sum. And then I've got negative 4, minus minus is a plus, plus 8. That gives me y to the power of positive 4. And usually we don't leave our answer with negative exponents, so we will write this as all the positive exponents in the denominator in the numerator, so y to the power of 4, and in the denominator there's 3 to the power of positive 1, because it's in the denominator now, and x to the power of 17. Okay, I hope that all made sense, that you learned a lot from this video, and I'll see you in the next topic where we look at fractional exponents, in other words, exponents that are fractions. What on earth can it mean to have x to the power of a half? Can I multiply a half times with x? Huh, maybe. See you.